Good dog and welcome to PA Dutch 101. This is video 37 in our series and we'll be covering the grammar topic of the command forms. Uh, this is a grammar based video. If you have not seen the previous videos, I would invite you to watch those first before coming to this video. Some of the stuff that we'll be talking about in this lesson uh, is building upon stuff that's been covered in previous lessons. So to really get a good handle on the command form, you need to know some stuff about verbs before being able to do this. So we'll leave it at that, the command forms today. All right. In grammar circles, this is also known as the imperative. Uh, maybe that's what you learned it as when you were learning another foreign language. Uh, but I'm going to call it by the English term, the command form. So various ways of giving commands in Pennsylvania Dutch. There are three command forms in Pennsylvania Dutch, and it all depends on who you're talking to as to which command form you're going to give. So, and a lot of it has to do with singular versus plural. If you are talking to one person, telling one person to do something, that's command form number one. If you're talking to more than one person, a group of people, two people, and you're telling them to do something, that's the uh, multiple people form, we'll talk about that. And then finally, are you included in the command form? In English, it's like, let's, let's go to the movies. That's not just one other or two other people you're talking to. You're also including yourself. So those are the three situations where we can have command forms in Pennsylvania Dutch. All right. Let's look at the singular command form first. It's called that because you're talking to one person. All right. And that's what you have to ask yourself. Always ask yourself, who am I talking to? That will determine which command form you use. If you are talking to one person, here are the rules. First, you take your verb, whatever verb it is, go, write, jump, shout, sing. We know that all of the infinitive verbs in Pennsylvania Dutch end in E. Rule number one, take that E away. For example, gea, to go, drop the E, gay, go. That's your command form. Right? If there's nothing else being said, you just say the verb and put an exclamation point at the end. Gay. Now, if there were other things like go home, then that would come after the verb. In the command forms, the verb always comes first. Okay. Here's another example. The, ex the opposite of gear to stop, stoppe. Drop the E, stop. Okay. It's really quite easy. All right. So, one person, just take the E away. If you're talking to more than one person, so the plural form is then used, and that's what you have to ask yourself. Again, how many people am I talking to? If you are talking to multiple people, the same first rule applies. Drop the E from the infinitive of the verb, but this time we have to add something, and we're adding a T to the end of the verb. So if we stick with those two same verbs, if we're telling three people to go, we take the verb, drop the E, add a T, gate, gate, okay? Or this time let's use the verb kumma, come, kumma, drop the E, add a T, kumt, okay? Again, if there was other stuff like go home, that other stuff would come behind the verb. That doesn't change, okay? Stoppe again, this time it'd be stop, okay? with T ending this time instead of just P. All right. Now, the other situation is what if you are included? The let's command form is used when asking for some action in the sense of let's, like let's do something. And that's what you have to think of. That's what we say in English. Let's go home. Let's eat some more cake, okay? You're included. When we do that, we use the mirror form of the verb. Well, that just happens to most, almost always be the same as the infinitive, so with the E ending. So we use that form of the verb, but this time we're also going to add mirror directly following the verb. And it looks something like this. If we take gay again, and this time we want to say, let's go, we use the mirror form, which in this case, hopefully you remember that gay is, is an irregular verb in that sense, and the mirror form is gaina. So we use that, and then we put mere after it, and the exclamation point. Gainama. Gainama. Let's go. Or, let's sing. The verb singa, the mere form is singa. Just add mere to the end. Singama. Singama. Let's sing. 
Again, if you were saying something after, like, let's sing a song, sing them on lead, that goes after the sing them That has to stay toward at the beginning of the sentence, at the front of the sentence, okay? Now, also, I want to make note that that let's form that we just talked about is totally acceptable and grammatically correct, although I want to make you aware that some Pennsylvania Dutch speakers uh, also use the following construction when creating a let's command. Not all Dutch speakers will use that gainema. A lot will, but there's also another option. They will use this construction. Los, uns, and then fill in the blank with what other, whatever verb. For example, los uns gay, let's go. And this is more of a direct, literal translation from the English. Losa means to allow or to let. Let us go. Let's go, which is exactly what this is in English. So uh, some Dutch speakers you meet will use this construction over the other one, the one that I previously stated. Again, both are correct. Both are acceptable. It depends on the speaker that you run into. I would prefer if you are learning without anyone else around to use the to not use this form and use the other form. Gain them up instead of los uns gay, preferably. But again, you you can use this construction if you want and you will hear this and see this from time to time. Here's another one. Take that same one. Let's sing los uns singer. Los uns singer. Okay. It's not wrong. It's a different form. Uh, both are okay. Great business evening. Let's practice a little bit. So, I'm giving you situations. Tell the following people to do what is given to you. Look at this example. We're talking to Sam, and we want to tell him to in Kuhkava, buy a cake. Ask yourself the question, how many people am I talking to? Well, I'm telling you. You're talking to one person, Sam. So, we would use the singular command form. Think back to how we did that. Take our verb, and what's the rule? Drop the E off. So you get cough and kuche. Cough and kuche. Buy a cake. Now, you could say, Sam, comma, cough and kuche. But you don't necessarily have to because this is implied that you're talking to one person. And in a situation, in a conversational situation, if Sam's the only person in the room and you're talking directly to him, he knows who's being addressed. Okay? This time we're telling Paul and Joe to net so loud schwätze. Net so loud schwätze. Don't talk so loudly. So now here we're talking to two people, so we use the plural form. Schwätze is our verb. Drop the E. Add a T. So you would say, schwätze net so loud. Schwätze net so loud. And again, you could say, Paul, Joe, schwätze net so loud. But you don't have to, it's kind of implied in the situation, especially if this was a conversational exchange. And then finally, uh, this time we're talking to Sarah and Janelle, and we want to say, es beer drinke, drink the beer. We want to tell two people, multi, so plural command form again, our verb is drinke, drop the E out of T, drink des beer, drink des beer, drink the beer. All right. That's it for command forms. Again, it all comes down to one question. Who are you talking to? Are you talking to one person? Are you talking to multiple people? Or are you included? That tells you which command form to use. Practice. Walk around your house. If you have people that you live with, give them commands in Pennsylvania Dutch. Think about what you'd be telling them. Look up the verb if you don't know it. It's a great one if you got kids and they're not eating their vegetables. and You can tell them in Pennsylvania Dutch, eat your vegetables. It's a little bit more of aggressive sound and it might scare them enough to make them eat their vegetables. But make sure you're doing it properly, okay? That's it for this one. So, bis die nächste video. Max gut und schwätz Deutsch.